All right. Now it is finally 6 p.m. in Japan. So welcome to our webinar, Why Study at TIU or Why Study at Tokyo International University. Before we start this webinar, let's run through some technicalities. Um, this webinar is going to be live streamed on our YouTube channel to ensure that participants who couldn't join us today, but also for you, uh, to watch it later, basically, to go back to it. This webinar is going to last for approximately one hour. And as you can see from the agenda, you will also have the chance to have your questions answered in the question and answer session at the end of the webinar. If you have any questions, um, please write them in the Q&A box. You can find the Q&A box by hovering over your screen. And there should be at the bottom menu bar um, a Q&A box. You can also write them in the chat and we'll try to find them there and answer your questions at the end. This webinar is also going to be moderated by me, Bastian Hart. Um, I'm the chairperson of the TIU eTrack Alumni Association, or in short, TIU EAA. And with me is co-moderator Oradun Yomjinda, who you may also call Ichi. From Thailand, he's the vice chairperson of the TIU EAA. We actually studied together at TIU and graduated together in August 2017. Hello, everyone. Yeah. Hi, Ichi. The purpose of this webinar is to give you, the prospective students, insights on the life experiences and studies um, at TIU. That is why we have invited current TIU students and TIU alumni, so um, graduate, graduates from TIU, um, from all offered English track majors at TIU, which are business economics, um, international relations, and DBI. Let me shortly introduce them to you. So the first speaker we have is Vichuta Tiratana Bhutti, who you might also call Whitney from Thailand. She graduated from TIU in August 2018, and she studied international relations. Currently, she's doing an MSc in development studies at Lund University in Sweden. And she's also going to go for another master degree uh, at Nanyang Technical University in Singapore next, this year. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome to the webinar. Hi, Whitney. Also with us is Vanda Taron uh, from Thailand as well. She graduated from TIU in March 2020, so quite recently, and she studied business economics. Currently, she's an account executive working in Japan. And during this corona pandemic and this quarantine, she has also started her own YouTube channel to give you some tips and tricks on how to get through it. So definitely worth to check out. Hi, Vanda. Hi. <laughs> Also with us is Edwin Kangati Prata uh, from Indonesia. He is currently studying still at TAU, a fourth year student uh, studying international relations, but he's going to graduate um, this summer and he's going to go to Nanyang Techn Technological University in Singapore as well. And he has been involved in the Model United Nations at TAU. So if you have some, quite, some questions regarding the Model United Nations, definitely ask him and he will be happy to help. Hi, Edwin. Hi, everyone. Finally, we have also Saki Arimoto. She's from Japan. She's currently a second year student studying business economics. She has also been involved as a campus representative for the TIU eTrack Alumni Association and has been a great help with that. Hi, Saki. Thank you, Bashan. Hello, everyone. And also with us is Shreya Data from India. She's currently a freshman student in the digital business and innovation. Uh, major at TIU. In fact, the Dis Digital Business and Innovation program is a relatively new program at TIU, so we do not have any alumni at the moment, but we're looking very much forward to welcome her to in our alumni association very soon because she's an outstanding student and very engaged. Hi, Shreya. Thank you for the great introduction, Bastian. Hi, everyone. Hi, Shreya. And finally, we also have Ben. Ben is from the US and he's currently working in the eTrack Admissions Center. Um, he will give a short introduction of the eTrack program itself, as well as the application process. He himself has studied at TIU through a Japan, the Japan Studies Program, JSP, um, and he studied Japanese studies and the language there. Hi, Ben. Good to have yes. you. Hello. Thank you so much. So I'm just going to hop in. Uh, sure. Really I'll give quickly. you the floor. <laughs> yes, I will go ahead and do that. Um, so thank you again, everyone, so much for coming to this webinar with our alumni. I promise not to take too much time because I do want to make sure that you get to hear their amazing voices and their stories. 
Um, but I just wanted to give kind of a quick background on TIU a little bit. Um, so TIU was founded in 1965. However, our English prac program actually started in 2014. Bastion um, and Ichi were some of our first students actually in the program. Uh, we're located, Tokyo International University itself is located in the greater Tokyo metropolitan area, but specifically in Saitama Prefecture um, in a city called Kawagoi, which is about 35 minutes from central Tokyo by train. Our program originally started, as I'm sure Bastion can remember, with uh, quite a small number of students, about 40. And currently it's grown to about 1,300 uh, international students within the university, of which about 1,100 are in our English track program. Uh, we actually have, I just found out today, that we actually have 68 nationalities represented at our university at the moment. And around 70% of our faculty is international as well. So faculty, so about 70% are non-Japanese and 30% are Japanese faculty. So we have a pretty good mix too. I'm sure our students will talk about some of their favorite professors, but they kind of hail from around the globe. We have professors from Indonesia and Kenya and America. So you can kind of ask them about that too, if you want. About the program itself, as Bastian mentioned, we have three majors. We have business economics, digital business and innovation and international relations. Um, they are business economics and IR, our Bachelor of Arts and digital business and innovation is a Bachelor of Science. Um, I'll just go through these really quickly, um, but they've each got some focus areas, right? For if you wanna kind of gain skills in, in a particular area. Um, business economics is kind of your traditional business degree with things like management, marketing, finance that you can learn about. Digital business and innovation really kind of looks at the crossroads between business and IT and technology. So you can study things like artificial intelligence, cryptocurrencies, kind of big data analytics, things like that. And then of course, international relations, which I believe we have quite a few IR majors here, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so I won't talk too much, but again, it studies kind of things like global conflict, global trade, things in that realm. And just to talk about admissions really quickly, just so you all know, we do have an application period opening up for our April intake on July 1st. And then we have two more application periods, one in September and one in November. And then for our September intake next year, right? This is for 2021. Um, we have four application periods, one in November, one in January, one in February, and one in March. Now for all of these, you will apply and you will be able to find out both your admission results. And if you decide to apply for a scholarship, which TIU has um, offers four levels of tuition reduction scholarships, 30, 50, 80, and 100%. You'll find out your uh, admission results and your scholarship at the same time as well. And if you have more questions about scholarships, again, I think uh, you should ask the students here because they'll be able to talk a little bit about that. Um, most of our application is done online. We do require a few things to be uh, submitted physically. So your transcript, a letter of recommendation, unless a teacher can send it from a school email address, and then your English proficiency score. And the rest is done online, including your essay, your extracurriculars, your brief background. And these are the minimum scores for English proficiency. However, we do recommend uh, getting as high of a score as possible because number one, it'll help you get a better scholarship if that's what you're applying for. And it'll also just kind of make your studies easier at TIU as well. Um, that's about it from me. Uh, so I will kind of hand the floor back over to our students. But if you do have any questions, I believe uh, Bastian has a wonderful slide at the end that will have our contact information. So please do reach out to the admissions team if you do have any questions as well. Thank you guys. Thank you so much, Ben. Um, just for all participants, if you have any if you have any questions regarding the eTrack program or the admission process, you will have the chance to have them answered at the end of this webinar. As said, um, Ben will be happy to address them, and um, yeah, we look forward to have them. So use the Q and A box and uh, at the bottom in the menu bar again, and uh, we will definitely answer them. So let's bring in our alumni and students to talk a bit about their experiences at TIU. Um, I've actually prepared some questions for you guys um, because we want to steer the conversation a bit and we want to have, of course, you guys speak mainly in this uh, webinar. And I have prepared the question of why did you choose TAU in the first place? And I would kind of like to give the question to Whitney at the beginning, so Wichita. Um, why did you choose TAU? Hello, um, thank you, Bastian. Um, 
And hi, everyone, again. Um, for me, I chose TAU for the main reason because it's, look, first, of, first of all, it's located in Japan. Back in high school, I used to do uh, Japanese as my major. So definitely, I wanted to keep learning languages. And plus, I wanted to boost my English as well. And I was interested in IR. So TAU was a really like good, perfect combination for me because well, it's IR taught in English located in Japan. So I didn't really have to you know, think much, much when I made a decision to go to TIU and language was important to me because back then my dream career was a diplomat. So this, I think for me it was quite a quick process in when I make a decision to go to TIU. Yeah, uh, I hope that answered your question. And, but I'm sure that like, maybe other people would probably have different you know, reasons of going to TIU, so maybe I'll ask Saki, what do you think, what was it about you that, um, you know, you chose TIU? Uh, thank you, Whitney. Well, for me, while I, well, my nationality is a Japanese, I actually grew up mostly in, in the Philippines, so, which means that uh, I have quite a, a lack of uh, in my Japanese skills. So, um, I initially planned to continue my studies in the Philippines, but for some personal reasons, I had to go back here in Japan. So uh, I still wanted to pursue my uh, college degree. So I looked for available uh, college that I can apply to. And I found uh, one of them was TIU. And it was perfect because the major that I was going for was business economics and uh, TIU was offering that one too. And on top of that, uh, with my very insufficient Japanese skills, I can, uh, while I'm pursuing the college degree, I can also learn Japanese there. So I think it's almost the same as what Whitney said, that um, it's like a combined, a lot of reasons into one. So it's a really nice choice for me. Maybe, um, so maybe what do you think about that, Vanda? <laughs> Thank you very much, Saki. So basically, um, there are three main reasons why I choose to study at TIU. Um, the first and second reason is that uh, I wanted to study Japanese, which will be my third language. I know I knew um, English and Thai when I was um, before I came to Japan. And the second reason is that I wanted to um, be in an international community. I want to practice my English because I didn't really use them a lot when I was back in Bangkok. And the third reason is that I wanted to explore a better job market or like I just wanted to have a better job opportunity opportunities in the future with my Japanese skills and my international, um, the things that I could learn from the international community. So I think it's pretty much similar to uh, what um, Whitney and Saki said earlier, I wanted to study Japanese, have an international community. And my, um, my last um, reason for getting a better job and now I'm working in Japan. So I feel like it's, um, it, it worked out for me, um, the things that I have planned and the reasons that I went into TIU. And now I'm really happy working in Tokyo. So now um, I'm going to pass this question to Edwin. Why do you come? Why did you decide to come to TIU? Right. Uh, thanks, Panda. Well, uh, for me, it's more about I was comparing between my choices. Uh, I have a I have an option to go to a college in Indonesia and also abroad. And I thought uh, first is that I was uh, thinking about expanding my horizon. So an international college was one of the uh, international university was uh, kind of my main priority. And the fact that uh, TIU, when I see the syllable, uh, when I see the syllabus and the names of the professors, when I enter is uh, they have a very uh, broad, uh, uh, they have a very broad variety of classes and sort of uh, they cater a lot to your interest and you can be flexible uh, compared to kind of a rigid uh, systematized system in Indonesia. So that's why I chose TIU. Now I've said my reason. Now we want to hear about uh, uh, our friend who's in the DBI uh, major, Shreya, please. Thank you, Edwin. Um, the main reason I chose TIU is because of the course. 
because you know i have compared universities across the world and even the ones in japan and uh, i don't think many universities offer this course because it is not core engineering nor core uh, finance so it's a mixture of um, application of technology in the business operations which i thought was perfect for me and uh, the second is i wanted to learn japanese because uh, if we see you know learning japanese can give you a, a lot of opportunities in the future and the way japanese is taught in tiu is amazing so uh, the course and japanese i think that was my that is why i uh, took my decision to come to tiu Thanks so much guys. I think um you've actually given us a broad perspective of what kind of reasons we could actually have to apply for TAU so I um, I really appreciate to hear all these kind of inputs. Um just for the attendees you can of course ask specific questions regarding their motivation uh, again later in the Q&A session. Um let me just go to the next slide as well and ask you Papa How was your experience at TAU? That's kind of for me an interesting question to ask you guys because you chose TAU but then you went to TAU. How has it actually been for you? So Shreya, um since you kind of um um were the last one for, uh, for the last question, uh, let me give this question to you. How was your experience at TAU? Um unfortunately, I did not have a lot of time to spend at TAU because I just spent I spent one semester, but even then I do have a good memory of my first semester. um the large and the most interesting part uh, i would say has be, been the japanese classes so i'm going to talk about two best things about tiu which actually set it apart from the other universities because you know education and classes would you'll get to know about it from all the universities but the japanese classes is something which i found found special about tiu uh, like all other international students even i was worried about you know learning the most one of the most difficult languages but the teachers and the curriculum is so uh, you know so uh, like they put in so much of efforts that uh, it can be very interesting so learning japanese in japan at tiu should definitely not be a problem for international students and uh, second i would say the the care and attention which is given to the students i mean uh, like you can approach the ieo or the academic affairs office any time and they will personally attend you so the kind of care which is given to each and every student is uh, i mean fantastic um so if i have to describe my experience at tiu shortly i would just say it is short and sweet um thank you shreya but, but now i think uh, edwin has spent a longer time in tiu than me <laughs> so what about you edwin how was your experience Right, thanks Shreya. Well, I've been here I've been in TIU for uh four years. I'm two months away from my graduation, but I would say uh apart from what Shreya said, which has been really uh amazing, uh because I've heard uh I've heard uh people say about how administration kind of works in Indonesia and I'm really glad that I came to TIU because administration issues is not a problem. You have a very uh capable uh sort of uh you have a very capable staff to help you especially when you're just a new high school student uh graduating high school then going to Japan alone and they help you a lot with your uh adaptation uh process in Japan apart from uh my personal experience in terms of uh uh my personal experience the academic experience has been amazing uh throughout my studies we have seen uh i have seen personally a lot of professors joining tiu and it sort of expands uh the reach uh of like many uh i would say many concentrations in ir like sub uh, categories in ir and i've been basically piling up knowledge and it the professors are really nice it's they're very easy to approach and well so far my experience in tiu was never disappointing it has been always great especially as also like the friends that i have it it everything's just uh become a very good uh experience for me for and vanda what about you you have graduated from tiu what's your experience thank you very much edwin so I got I because I already spent 4 years in TIU I got so many many things to talk about 
But um, aside from what Treya uh, mentioned about uh, the facilities and how helpful the TIU are or the TIU administrator's office are, and the international community that Edwin have mentioned. For me, I wanted to talk about the teachers and the courses available at TIU. So I study business economics and basically I, I wasn't really sure um, about what I was studying and what wish, like what is, it, what is it for me? I haven't really discovered myself, but as I joined TIU and I um, decided um, like what classes I'm gonna take this semester, and also like I've been thinking like when I was in third year I've been thinking so much about my future like I've already been in university for so long I haven't decided what is my what will I want to be I, I'm, I'm not like one of the people who have figured it all out so the teachers I met they were in the pictures in the slides as well which um, they guided me through what I should do in order to discover what my special like special abilities are or just my personal interests um, at first. So after I kind of like figured out a little by little by also like talking to the teacher and they also gave me some useful advice that I still use today. And I, I just really enjoy the courses that I took at TIU, um, both in business economics and international relations, because TIU offers you really flexibility to choose any courses you want. You just have to um, make sure that your credits are matching with what they require you in order for you to graduate. So I took business economy classes, international relations classes. I even took the new major classes, the study in development i'm sorry i forgot the name but um okay. that and okay what was the name of the major does anyone know i think i was DBI, something DBI, 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 development DBI, business. I mean, yes. uh, yeah i took that classes to the last semester because it was the first semester that the major started and i also took some japanese classes before I graduated, which is like a varieties of courses to choose from. And now um, I kind of like get to discover what I really like, which is marketing right now. I work in a marketing company and I also saw a question about um, from Pasandi Paris about um, if you are interested in marketing, what is the most suitable major for you? Is it IR or is it BE? For me, I studied business economics, so I would say that um, it might match what you wanted to study. But of course, um, TIU offers you a lot of varieties of courses to choose from. So no matter ma what major you choose to be in, you can always join a class from the other major. Um, I think one of that's gonna... a very good point because I actually um, did the same thing. I joined a marketing class or marketing related class and I was an international relations major. So let's hear from uh, Saki, if that would be okay. Saki, um, how has it been for you? Thank you. Well, for me, academic wise, um, while some courses can be very challenging, it is also fun. Like uh, how Vanda said, there are a lot of there is a wide variety of courses that we can take and you can also have a really uh, close contact to your professor and uh, you can ask them easily if you have problems with your studies. Well, for extracurricular activities, this is one of the things I want to highlight because um, I am part of CG, Campus Globalization. It is one of the student leadership internship teams in campus. So it is an on-campus internship and uh, this has helped me to learn a lot of skills and uh, the, these uh, these include holding workshops, managing SNS and um, video projects and translation projects. So these all in all has helped me in finding outside internships like um, in companies. I've already had around three internships. So this has been really helpful for me. So this uh, this internship is available. Th there are a lot of variety, so you can pick from E Plaza, uh, EP Library, and you will know more about this. So it will you can choose from which you are interested in. So I think uh, that was one of the best uh, experience that I had. And maybe we can hear from another TIU alumnus, Whitney. How was your experience in TIU? Hello, thank you. 
Um, well, it's been a long time that I graduated from TIU, around two years. But, and so I have one of the very first batch that, you know, attended TIU. And I would say that what I really appreciated about TIU back then was that the administrative office and professors really listen to students. I, I'm sure that some of um, you know, our speakers have already talked about it, but I have this really great examples from our own experience. Like we didn't have Wi-Fi when, during my first semester I was there, or at least it wasn't stable. And we didn't have database for research. And when we gave these kind of feedback to the university, they always responded really quickly and things got fixed really done. And now I'm sure we have uh, Edurome, uh, so we can access that Wi-Fi network anywhere on you know, academic institutions, probably around the world. And we also have database for student to research. So I think TAU really listened to what we needed. Of course, not, uh, not everything can be perfect all the time, but uh, they're willing to help and willing to resolve whatever you, you know, you you respond to, uh, you give them the feedback. And another thing is, I think professors are really helpful. And I know many people have <laughs> already talked about this, but I just have to highlight it that <clears throat> I, um, throughout my time at TIU, there are many times that professors have really helped me, whether you know I came up with the very last minute of, I don't know, scholarship application, graduate school application, they are always willing to sit with me and help me out. And that was I really like about TIU. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Um, I think that's a very good point at the end. I also felt that um, since TIU is a very new, has a very new program with the E-Track program, it has been just around for a few years. They have been really listening to the students and have really have tried so hard to make this the best experience for all of us. So I'm, I'm really glad to hear that uh, you guys have actually had such a nice experience. So these two questions I've prepared for you, but I've also prepared a couple of questions for our viewers and I would like to ask the viewers to answer them. So I'm going to start a poll now. Uh, you will see three questions and you will have a minute, around about a minute uh, to answer them. It's just very simple questions. We just want to hear a bit from you since you can't interact right now with us, um, where you're from, what you do and uh, why you're interested in Japan. So let me start the poll question and you should be able to see them now. So you have a minute to answer them. Yeah. Um, you also have multiple choice options for the second and third question. So feel free to um, answer them to your liking. Um, in the end, these questions will be shared with the rest of you guys, uh, with the rest of the attendees, but don't worry, they're anonymous. So you, no one can see your name. I can see already a couple of answers coming in. More than 20 have answered. Ooh, this is exciting. Yeah, you can't see it, but I can. It's, I will show it to you soon. It's a lot of fun to see the uh, shifts in the bars. Okay, so far 31 have answered the poll. Let's wait a couple of minutes, a uh, couple of seconds more. All right, okay, quite interesting to see. Now I'm gonna stop the polling and I'm going to share the results. So as you can see, we have lots of people joining in from Asia, but we also have from the Americas. Sorry that we weren't too specific, but you know, you could go on and say Southeast Asia, Northeast Asia, Latin America, et cetera, et cetera. It would be um, quite, a, quite a lot. Um, majors, lots of you are interested in the digital business and innovation major. Good thing that we have Shreya to answer your questions here. We have also international relations and BE uh, being actually quite close to each other. And we also have the interests. So why do you want to study in Japan? Let's see, the biggest reason is tradition and culture. Ah, yes, so all of you are very cultured people. I like to see that. Uh, we also have Japanese language, which is a very good point. I think all of us can say that we wanted to study Japanese at one point in life. And uh, we have also working in Japan, nature and pop culture quite close to each other. So quite interesting to see. Thanks so much for that. Um, let me close the results. Wonderful. And then we would actually have the chance now for you guys 
uh, to answer your questions. So the next slide or the next part of this is the Q&A. Um, for that, I will for now stop sharing the screen because I kind of would like you guys to see everyone. And um, you also have the speaker view so that you can talk to them a bit more directly. Ichi, I think there have been quite some questions already. So I'm quite excited to hear what you've collected. Perhaps you can uh, give us um, a short question at the beginning, just for all of you again, for the attendees, you can still um, ask your questions in the Q&A box, um, which is at the menu bar at the bottom. Feel free to leave your question there and we'll try to answer them. Um, so Ichi, what kind of interesting question do you have for us? All right, uh, let's start with some relaxing questions. Um, to all the panelists, can you describe your typical weekend at TIU? How is student life outside of academics? So uh, ah, that's a very lovely question. Um, perhaps we can start there with uh, Saki, who is also currently a student. Saki, go ahead. How is your weekend? Um, as I, I, I think for me personally, I really, I really want to be productive. So most of the time, if I'm not in my, if I'm not doing any internship, I'll be doing part-time jobs or doing some online work. But of course, I also a lot of time to hang out with my friends because um, in TIU, there's a lot of, uh, in Kawagoe, since it is near in t near to TIU, there are a lot of places you can uh, go to and there are also quite a lot of events you can join. So I think that's one of those. You're also quite a hard worker, right? You have some part-time jobs at the moment, don't you? Yes, I do. <laughs> Oh, if some attendees have interest in uh, finding yes. a part-time job for studying, um, Saki can definitely give some answers to that. Also, Shreya, for you, it has been just one semester, but how has it been for you? Um, in the starting, I just uh, went around with my friends to Kawagoi, just like Saki said, and even to Suragashima. Like, I really like the nature there. It's, it's so beautiful. So you can just sit near the lake and uh, just enjoy with your friends. And um, as the, uh, you know, the course uh, graduate like um, when I had more studies naturally I was do, uh, engrossed in my homework and uh, near the end I found part-time jobs so I have a diverse experience so I have actually experienced hanging out with my friends and homework and then part-time job in the weekend so and yes of course I used to do groceries at cleaning my <laughs> room so you just get the weekend for that very essential point, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, looking at um, Wanda, who's just graduated in March, how has it changed for you and how has it been um, compared to now? Well, um, thinking, looking back, I felt that um, weekends when I was a student was very, like, really fun. I used to always hang out with friends, travel, and also work part-time job and meet my coworkers. And basically um, it really depends on what you want to achieve um, in the weekends. But usually I always try to, because you know, I get tired when I study too much. So I always try to relax and um, try fun things during the weekend. So I wonder how Edwin weekend looks like. <laughs> Edwin, tell us. Right. Uh, I, I'm basically, I think it's a typical, if you ask for a typical weekend, I think everyone's going to be pretty similar, either a combination of like hanging out with friends or like uh, finishing assignments. But for me personally, I'd like to, uh, in the morning, I, because the, the school's library is open in the morning. So sometimes I go there in the morning, uh, do my work and probably leave around lunch and then spend the rest of my time either uh, exploring new places in Tokyo. That was that what I that's what I did when I was in the first and second year. Uh, after I got bored with Tokyo, I explored uh, Kawagoe. I think I know a lot of places in Kawagoe now based on my adventures. But yeah, I think a typical weekend would be spent uh, doing assignments and also exploring Japan. Uh, I would say. I see. I see. It sounds good. Ichi, what other questions do you have for us? All right, let's get to the most, the highest worded question right now. And I think that all panelists like basically have experience in this. 
like what kind of part-time jobs are common among international <laughs> students that are not yet fully fluent in Japanese, and or if not, how long does it usually take with Japanese learning in TIU to be able to find part-time job? Let's start with the first part of the question. If you are not fully fluent in Japanese, what kind of part-time jobs are available for you? Uh -huh. I, yeah, I know of a, a few. <laughs> I've been working. Um, Mm, I, I think I can uh, answer Go that question. Okay. Um, so my current uh, part-time job is at a sushi place. And I think, I'm not sure why it's very common, but um, for students who are not really fluent in Japanese, there are a lot of students applying for that. And also doing a part-time job in factories as well. So I think um, convenience stores are quite common too, but I think um, after you've gained some Japanese skills, that's when you are uh, you can do convenience uh, convenience store part time jobs. I think that's a very good point. Yeah, there are a couple of part time jobs out there who are for um, students who are currently learning still Japanese and are still not hundred percent fluent. But there's definitely something to find. There's also the English Plaza. I'm actually not quite sure who has worked there, but just to give from my side a short introduction, Edwin, I can see. Okay, I'll give you the question in a second. The English Plaza is basically an area where most of the time students can hang out. Um, it's for Japanese to basically speak more English and interact with the international students. Uh, but it's also just a fun place to hang out because there's a cafe where you can get each day one free drink, let it be coffee, let it be tea. It's a lot of fun. And um, you can actually have a part-time job there and get involved at TIU. So Edwin, well, how has your experience been like? Tell us about it. All right. So uh, I pretty much agree with everything you said. Uh, I worked in the English Plaza for, I think, a semester before everything, uh, before my studies got a bit busier. But uh, I think English Plaza is a good place where you want, if you want to uh, earn money while also expanding your sort of uh, knowing more people, because a lot of people come there. Uh, you, you can find a nice mixture of international students and also Japanese students, which I think it would, and we are required to speak English in the plaza all the time. So it's a win-win solution for international students who wants to find Japanese friends and Japanese students who wants to practice their English. So I would say English Plaza is a really good option for students who are uh, not that confident with their Japanese skills to find a part-time job in Japan. Correct me if I'm wrong, but when I graduated from TAU, it was like the hangout place for students. Exactly. Still the same. Okay, cool. Still the same, yes. <laughs> Good to hear, good to hear. Shreya, have you also been working there actually? Um, I actually have an interesting experience in part-time because uh, I was in my first semester when I applied to a job in convenience store and I got rejected because of my Japanese skills. But then I applied to a dance school. So I currently teach uh, Indian dance to Japanese people. Uh, I do not require Japanese there. So I thought that was a good solution for me because I am not I'm still not good at Japanese. So, but that job doesn't require for me to speak in fluent Japanese. So, um, that was something I found a solution, a part time job which doesn't require Japanese. But yeah, just like Edwin mentioned, E Plaza is a great place. Uh, you can, you get to work there from second semester on the campus and you can adjust your working hours. So, um, that's a great option, I'd say. I think that's really cool to hear. Um, I guess that's also a good point for all the attendees. I mean, guys, if you have some skills you can bring uh, with you, use them, you know, use what you have. There are always some kind of other um, things you can do. Can it, be, it can be from your culture. It can be some language skills you have, can be translation. There will be ways of um, finding a part-time job. And I believe as well that the university helps with that um, to a certain extent. So um, thanks so much, Ray, for that point. Also um, on campus, outside of the English Plaza, there are a couple other on-campus part-time job opportunities. Saki, as she mentioned before, works for the campus globalization team. There's even um, like a peer writing center. So there's a couple different options as well there. Okay, great to hear. Um, Saki, do you want to mention the um, global, global, uh, sorry, okay. the globalization uh, team? Yeah. 
uh, the the team that I belong to is Campus Globalization. So like I've That's said uh, earlier, we have quite a lot of tax tasks. And um, one uh, some of these are managing SNS account and holding workshops, some video projects and translation projects. And aside from Campus Globalization, I just want to like briefly uh, talk about the other teams as well. So there is EP Library. So aside from ePlaza, you can also work for the library. And uh, there's also... Pause peer advisors for writing, if I'm not mistaken. So they help their fellow students in uh, writing their paper, basically. And uh, lastly, we also have we also have PAs, peer assistants, and uh, they are the ones who are assigned in helping international students and also exchange students in um in basically living their life here in Japan. <laughs> Um, maybe I've missed some teams. I think there's also J Plaza and other open campus that, but I, those teams are um, mainly for Japanese students. Yeah. I think all of us actually here in this in this channel have had a part-time job in Japan, so we can continue um, and talk about it uh, for a long, long time. Um, I think Ichi, there are some other really interesting questions um, out there, so um, let's hear the next one. All right, so sticking to the theme of like life in Japan outside of campus, this is actually a two part question. Um, the first one is basically, how is your experience in TIU's dorm? So let's start with that. I am not sure if the dorm has changed from the time that we start in TIU. Have, you, li have you lived in the dorm, Ichi? Yes. How was it? It was nice. It was nice. The room was nice. Um, but let's hear who is living in the dorm. Do we have anyone who live in the dorm? I think right Whitney now? did. She was an RA as well, so she can also mention about her part-time job while explaining the dorm a bit. Right. Yes. Um, so I spent three years at TAU. First year, I lived in the dorm as a you know as a student, like a general student, because TAU offers like a. The option to stay in the dorm for all first year students and then second year I moved out and third year I moved back into the dorm to become a residential assistant. Uh, I worked together so with Edwin during that time. I like the dorm for the fact that it's really convenient for let's say if you're a first year student um, when you go there to TAU you, and to Japan you probably wouldn't have yet your community and I think the dorm is a great place to start like you find your friends there, you you know you quickly get your community, get your groups of friends, and it's also easier because once you have to move out, then you can also like kind of find your roommate through there as well. And me and Vanda also lived together during uh, my second year, and then during the third year, then Vanda went to um, exchange program. Then I moved back into the dorm to become a residential assistant. It's a bit different of experience. But I would say being a residential assistant, it's also another part-time job that you can do. But you technically don't get paid, but you get the free rent. So it's, you know, oh. it's weighed out that way. And it's also a good way if you like to interact and help international, new international incoming students, then I think it's a great um, experience for me. Yeah. How has it been for Edwin? Right, actually, I have worked with both Whitney and Vanda in the dorm. That's oh, how long okay. I've stayed in. That's how long I've stayed in the dorm. So the pattern is pretty similar to Whitney. I spent my first year in the dorm, then uh, rent my own apartment. Then a friend of mine who was the former RA graduated, and I took over his place. Uh, life in the dorm is very nice, I would say, because. Uh, Everything is there for you. You have internet, you have uh, your own bathroom, you have your own laundry room and whatever not. And the house manager is really nice too. Like uh, they're, they're like uh, Oji-san. So like they're pretty uh, like uh, old Japanese uh, men and uh, basically a man and a lady who kind of go in every morning and kind of take care of all the administrative duties. But the good part is in living the dorm is to actually talk with them. You can practice your Japanese, that's one. But also you can get insights for a lot of things, uh, especially in the know-hows on how to live in Japan, especially as a uh, innocent high school student who just went to Japan alone. I actually learned a lot from them. So I would say life in the dorms are really nice. Uh, Vanda, what do you think? 
Okay, um, so I also um, joined as an RA um, for the past, I, I just moved out in 2020. So I was living in a dorm for like a year, two year. I cannot remember exactly when, how, how long, but it was really, I would say um, really convenient uh, as Whitney had said. Um, there's everything provided for you, especially when you're moving to a new country, you don't have anything with you, you don't have anyone, you don't have your parents with you. It's going to be, some people, it's going to be the first time for them to live alone, which um, the dorm provides you security, you know, like you feel safe there and you have friends, you have the house managers who take care of you. And whenever, so for example, you don't know something like what, when the letter came to your door, what, what is this about? Like, what is this letter? Like, what do I have to do with it? There's always someone to go to. There's the house manager and there's RAs. Like Edwin, me, or like, um, before it was me and Whitney as well. So I feel like um, it's a good way to try to adapt to a new environment when you're moving to Japan. Yeah, I think that's an excellent point. Um, it's a transition from being a high school student to a normal student and living abroad. I think I can see everyone nodding here. Um, so it definitely helps. The dorm helps because there are people you can talk to and you have a community um, and it just gets you into the life of TAU. So Ichi, have you some, do you have another question for us? Yes. Okay. So this is actually the second uh, part of the question is, do you have any specific tips or tricks to survive in Japan without the skills of speaking Japanese? Hmm. Uh, I think that's an excellent question. Um, but I think, you know, community is one and um, the living in the dorm could be one, but you can survive without that uh, too. I've lived in my own apartment, never in the dorm. Um, but I'm pretty sure that some of you have some interesting tips to share. Um, let's see. How about Shreya? Um, since you've been just there a semester, what was your, what would be your tips and tricks for now? Um, if I say that... Um apart from learning Japanese to, to adapt better to the atmosphere, you should be more, you know, outgoing or you may be open to changes, you know, because I moved from, from Indian community, which is like, um, you know, everyone is, uh, you know, we have a groupism, I would say, but you move to an individual community, you know, you suddenly become an adult. So you should be, you know, outgoing, you should be, um, uh, more open to changes, you should be interacting with others, especially the ones which are not from your own community, you have to interact with international students. So if you are just, you know, living in your own um, room, or maybe just in your own circle, I think uh, it would be hard for you to adapt. Okay, thanks, Shreya. And how has it been for you, Saki? Um, I think for me, uh, since I am, I would consider myself uh, as a Filipino and it was quite at first it was quite hard for me to adapt as uh, I didn't have really fellow Filipinos there and like Shreya said you really have to be uh, outgoing so that you can have more interactions and I think that having uh, communication and having you know like friends basically those are uh, those are the essential parts of uh, you know being able to adapt in Japan so yeah be more outgoing I guess and uh, in the in TIU too, they offer a lot of services in order to have more interactions with your fellow students. Like in E Plaza, they have the PEP session, and uh, they in J Plaza too, they also offer conversation partners if you want to practice your Japanese. So yeah, you can also gain friends from from those services. Oh, I see. Um, I can also see a question um, from Farhan Toshi. What do you suggest to prepare before, before starting as a freshman? I find that quite interesting and fitting now because I kind of would like to ask all of you, um, the alumni, when you can look back to your freshman year, what would you tell yourself? Um, what would you tell yourself back then? You know, what you could you have done differently? And for the current students who are with us here, yeah, what do you suggest to prepare before starting as a freshman? Perhaps we can... Um, start with Edwin and uh, see uh, into the, you know, look into your past. Right. So it's been four years back. Uh, if there's, uh, if there's something that I would tell to my past self before going to Japan is to uh, keep an open mind because 
uh, you're starting something new. I think it works for anything actually, but especially if you're going abroad and to a, com to a society that is very different to yours uh, back in your home country, kind of keep your mind open, uh, be prepared to sort of experience a lot of shocks and just expect the unexpected, if that makes sense. A kind of like everything's going to be new and you're going to be basically starting off a new life with a new community with uh, basically with no one that you have known before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think that's uh, one thing that I would suggest to everyone who's interested in doing a study abroad like this. Can I ask you, Ichi, what would you say after, you know, having been already since a long time, uh, a graduate from TAU, what would you tell your younger self? Actually, it has been almost a decade. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> uh, oh, let's see. Um, well, for me, I this is going to maybe sound weird to, sound weird to the like, attendees, but for people who know, we, we know that I think I spent like too much time studying. I feel that I should have spent more time hanging out with friends, you know, and traveling to Japan, like in the end. So right now I am living in Malaysia and I didn't manage to like travel to all the prefectures in Japan. I still have never been to like Hokkaido. So I really feel that I missed an opportunity to experience Japan. I'm glad and I know that many of our panelists managed to get time to travel across Japan with their friends. So if any of the attendees have an opportunity to join TIU, make sure to travel the country. Yeah, uh -huh. I think it's a very good point. You know, there are lots of t things you need to you need to put a lot of time and effort in your studies. But don't forget that you should also enjoy yourself there in Japan. I mean, you have now the chance to be or going to Japan. So explore the country, explore the language, explore the food, which is incredible. And uh, just indulge a bit in it. Um, so it's a very good point what Ichi um, mentioned. I think all of us, there are still some kind of things we still want to do in Japan and haven't done yet. So definitely use your time while you're there. Um, but I also would kind of like to hear, let's see, who hasn't spoken. Ah, Whitney, let's let's hear yours. Um, what would you tell yourself, um, tell your younger self? Yeah, mm, there's actually nothing much I wanted to change about my past. Um, I like how my life in you so much. It would a bit go against Ichi that, you know, you should spend time studying. <laughs> uh, if it, then you have to <laughs> then go for it. I think what a uh, suggestion I can give to our first year students and including myself, I'm starting my new master's degree soon. So um, be like when you find your passion, go for it. Don't hold back. Go for it, whatever it is. Uh, whether it is studying, cooking. Uh, when I was back in Japan, I was really into running. I still am, but not as crazy as before. Um, I ran a lot in Japan, I explore, um, you know, me and Vanda ran together as well as this one half marathon event in Kawagoe. <laughs> so we did that together for two years. It was really fun. Um, as well as travel. Um, if you're more into nature, I recommend climbing Mountain Fuji in summer. It's a really great experience. <laughs> yeah, it's something you probably should experience at least once in your lifetime. And also do internship if you find yourself interested in something, even if they don't open for application, send them an email. That's what I meant by, you know, don't hold back when you find that there's something you're interested in. And I think that's going to get you quite far in uh, and really a lot of fun in university life. So you can see it depends on your priorities, but also it's very important to kind of balance the studies and the leisure time. Um, you need to find the middle ground. So that's uh, going to be quite an interesting experience for all of you. Um, so thanks so much, guys, for the uh, for the answers. So I think we have time for one more question. Uh, Ichi, uh, why don't you go ahead and shoot us another question? We go into that and then... I don't like that we only have one more question. How about two? Um, okay, let's try. <laughs> that's true, true. Because this is like a, a very interesting question. Um, we have one that we have stated. I think I can answer this question really well. Are there any study abroad opportunities in TAU? If yet, what are they and how does study abroad fits into a student's academic plan? So yes, I think let's start with Wanda. <laughs> All right, so um, during the four year in CAU, I went to study abroad in the Netherlands, to be exact, is Amsterdam. 
uh, there were there were um, a lot of I think when I was in TIU, it was only not only I said um, there was mainly two programs that you could participate in. First one is what I um, participated participated in, which is called ISEP or International Student Exchange Program. So you could go to ISEP either for a semester, a year, and you can also do it twice. Like some of my friends do it twice. So um, I would say that studying in TIU really give you the opportunity to explore uh, studying abroad. Because there's when I was looking at the university to choose from this program, there were over 300 universities because um, the programs are really big. Like it was, it's like an organization of all the universities in the world when you could choose anywhere, like um, like anywhere do you like that you wanted to go. So um, the experience was really nice. And regarding the tra transferring of credits, I was able to transfer all my credits back to TIU. It was uh, not an easy process, but you can always plan before because it's really um, different, like, different for each university to transfer back to TIU. You have to match them with what you're studying in TIU as well. So um, if you plan to go up, like to maybe take a semester abroad like I did, maybe talk to the, there's like, uh, I don't, I don't know who is in charge now, but there's a facility in IEO that take care of the study abroad programs. So you should talk to them a year before you gonna go to um, like to the exchange semester. So I hope um, a lot of more people go abroad uh, and take this opportunity to explore other countries, not only in Japan. Thanks, Vanda. I think uh, you were the only one who actually went abroad, uh, among us at least. Um, there were many more other students. Um, I can tell that it was a great experience for them as well. They studied, I think, in Australia. There were some, I think, in the UK. Uh, so you have lots of options, as Vanda said. And um, the TIU, as soon as you start, they can definitely help you and will have some sessions on that, on how you can basically go abroad while actually living abroad. <laughs> All right, Ichi. I think we can give another. I, I think can give another question a go. So let's let's do another question. All right. Um, so similar question. What do you suggest to prepare before starting as a freshman at TIU? I see. I see. I see. I think we've answered that question, right? Or right, does yeah. some has anyone something to add? Um, well, um, let me jump in, into this a little bit. Um, if I could recommend someone who's going to come to TIU soon as a freshman, I would say um, it's not only coming to TIU, uh, like it's not only beneficial in coming to TIU, but also in other countries, if you're going to a university that is not in your home country, is to study the language that belong to that country. Like no matter, like, uh, TIU does not require you to have Japanese skills in order to come here, but it's always better to have the language because it gives you a lot more opportunities and also it's, it makes your experience more um, awesome, I would say. So if you have time, study Japanese and you're going to enjoy your time here more than if you wouldn't study. Thanks, Vanda. So let me let me close this um, by asking all of you a question. So we go through it, and I kind of want you to think about the best moment you had. It's quite a difficult question, but when you look back, or if you're currently looking at your studies, what is this particular moment which always comes into your mind um, regarding your life in TAU? So I'm not sure who would like to jump in because it's a harder question. But if you have an answer, go go for it, Whitney. I can see that you've unmuted yourself. It's really um, graphic in my memory, I think. Uh, uh, my best memory in TAU is probably the club, the model United Nations. I was, <laughs> yeah, well, I see many of you are part of the, you know, our uh, former members of the club. Um, we started from something really small, really organic. We, we were like just a small group of friends who were interested in international relations and uh, the United Nations and with the help of professors there and with the help of the, you know, IEO International Exchange Office at TIU and all the administrative offices, we became a club with, I don't know, I think almost a hundred members, which is really something really impressive to me, uh, seeing how the club has been um, growing. 
So yeah, that's that's my best memory, I think. And I also had, um, you know, we attended many conferences across Japan, and that was really fun as well. And I'm not sure, correct me if I'm wrong, but by the time I graduated, I remember we had at least uh, in whatever conference we went to, we at least got one award, at least. So I don't know if it's still that way, but yeah, that's probably my best memory. And I learned a lot through that club. Edwin, can you add to it? <laughs> The the legend still stays. We haven't gone back from a conference without uh, without not winning anything. So we always Ooh. at least win something. You're showing when we off go now. to a conference. I mean, well, uh, I think since uh, quite a uh, quite a big chunk of my time in TIU is spent with uh, the club and also the friends I meet there, I would say uh, my best memory was to go to a conference in the uh, called all japan model united nations it's held in ikebukuro which is going to be our future campus uh we went there with like quite a few members and it was back in 2018 and i think at that time we had sort of like this kind of like the strongest uh, team of members going and we really enjoyed the conference and we gained a lot of connections and the memory was just so nice that there's a lot of aspects to it but uh definitely i think uh the best memories in a, my university life has to be joining one of the clubs in tiu and that doesn't really uh that that is not only confined to mun but also like uh, tiu have a lot more clubs that would that you might be more interested in Thanks, Edwin. How has it been for you, Saki? Um, for me, I think um, collectively there are a lot, but uh, if I were to choose one from them, I would say is when we got to present in Honda. So there's one course called Career uh, Experience Practicum, and I fortunately was uh, accepted to that one. And uh, for this course, we were tasked to create like a bl blueprint to to um, provide them solution with uh, problems that exist in their company. And um, the last task was to present um, the blueprint in front of some Honda staff and also some professors. So it was really nice. And we got to, uh, we were awarded the best performance. So <laughs> that was one of those. And I think the most important one was, um, I was, um, I was really scared in doing presentations for some reason. I'm just really scared in speaking. But then from that experience, I, I feel like I uh, found, uh, I, I discovered that I actually like speaking in front of uh, people, especially when I'm talking about something that I'm very passionate about. I can't imagine that you were nervous um, because you're such a great speaker at the moment. So, <laughs> so. Shreya, I think it would be next. Shreya, what is your best moment in the short time you had at TIU? Um, my, oh, since I'm just a freshman, I do not have much of a professional or academic experience. But like the mess, best, my best memory would be the parties, the Halloween party and the, the sports day that we had. I mean, the, the sports day that we had was amazing. I mean, uh, it was, I got to interact with not even the, the batchmates, but even the seniors. And uh, the Halloween party, you get to know so many uh, people from the E track and the J track. So, uh, you know, it's a cute little party that you get to have. Uh, I think I really enjoyed in that. Thanks so much, Ray. Yeah, the parties were great. That's true. <laughs> and Vanda? Okay. Um, so, if to speak of my best memory about studying at TIU, it's for me, it's totally non-academic. I would say that my best memories are from traveling in both um, the past throughout the four years that I had, uh, three years that I had in Japan and also um, abroad. When I was doing my exchange semester, I got to explore a lot of cultures and also learn so much throughout the traveling. And that would be my best memory at TIU. So thank you very much for asking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thanks, Vanda. So I guess, guys, um, unfortunately, the time is running out. And despite this being a lot of fun, um, we have to come to a closure, even though um, 
it's a bit sad, I have to say. I really enjoyed this. Um, so for all the attendees, uh, first of all, I want to say thank you very much for joining. Um, this webinar will be shared with you um, through a YouTube link, but we've also recorded it. Uh, so you can definitely watch it afterwards. If you have any questions, um, you can ask for admission inquiries. So for example, um, about the eTrack program, but also the application process as Ben um, pointed out, he can, uh, you can uh, um, send a question to that email address. You, you also have some time to take a picture now, I think of the slide that would help. Um, we also have a couple of overseas offices in India, Indonesia, Thailand, and Vietnam. So if you would prefer to speak in your own national language, feel free to um, contact them there. You can also um, send an email to us, the TIU eTrack Alumni Association, if you have any inquiries um, regarding the experience at TIU, the life at TIU, but also how it is after you graduated from TIU, we would be happy to help and we will definitely um, reach out to the panelists, to the speakers um, to basically answer your questions. So feel free to share, uh, to send them to us uh, via email. And generally, if you want to fo uh, follow us on social media, just search for eTrack TIU or at TIU um, Japan. You will definitely find us. You will get some more information on the application process, but also just generally life. Um, so again, uh, to all attendees, to all um, speakers, a big thank you. It was a lot of fun. Um, I really hope that um, all the attendees could uh, get the most out of it. And we really look forward to see you at TIU. So good luck with your application process. And uh, to all the panelists, thanks so much for, for being here, guys. Yes. Thank you, Bastian. Um, <clears throat> just one more thing to add, of course. Uh, we also have a Facebook page and a YouTube page. So please feel free to check those out. And I know a lot of you were asking admissions questions. So please uh, check out our website because there's lots more information about admissions and just like uh, various information on the services at TIU. Uh, but thank you so much, Bastian. And thank you so much to all of our panelists. You guys are fantastic. Okay, guys, then take care and see you soon. <laughs> Bye.